You want to talk about your skincare routine today? Basically, he just dips his face into his water bowl every single day. Don't ya? Yes, you do. And George. George has to come say hi too. So, I am such a big boy now. And his skincare routine is me cleaning out his little folds every day. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that everyone's here to join the video. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole. I have hooded eyes and I tend to do a lot of eyeshadow tutorials on my channel that work for my hooded eye boys and girls. But today we are talking all about skin. So over the past few years, skin has become really, really important to me. I turned 30 this year and I know 30 isn't old in any way, shape or form, but I've really tried to take care of my skin in ways that I hadn't in the past over the last few years. Now with that said, I have been moisturizing my skin and washing my skin every single night since I can remember. I started a full on skincare routine a long time ago. I think it started in like high school. So I mean, I'm sure these days people know a little bit more these days, like I'm so old, but I think these days people kind of start their kids on a routine a little bit earlier, especially because when you think about like the hormones that we're pumping into food these days that are going into our children's bodies, things start to pop up earlier like acne and those kinds of things. So anyway, long story short, I think the earlier you can get on a skincare routine, the better. So mine started in high school and I have always been somebody who has stuck to my skincare every night, every morning without fail. I don't care if I get home at five in the morning, which never happens, but I would do my skincare because I just can't go to bed without it. Skincare and brushing my teeth morning and night. So like I said, over the past two years, I've kind of incorporated new things into my skincare routine, like getting facials and getting laser and doing chemical peels and shaving my face and incorporating new products. So with that said, I've kind of changed things up since my last video, which was done kind of towards the end of summer. Now that it's winter and I have a dog who I take outside all the time, I don't have a backyard. So whenever we go outside, I walk him. So I'm on five, six walks a day. And in the winter, that wind in Chicago is no joke and it really takes an effect on my skin. The older I get, the more I see that the elements affect my skin. So I've incorporated some new products since my last video. So if you watched that video, I do still have a lot of the same products, but I've incorporated oils and serums and toners to kind of help with the dryness that I experience in the winter. Now again, I talk about this in my videos. My skin can be totally different from your skin. What works for me might be horrible for your skin. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I have pretty normal skin. I get dry around my eye area sometimes. I get dry around my lids my, and my nose gets dry. Everything else is pretty normal. I have a little bit of my dog is fluffing, sorry. I have a little bit of discoloration right here that has kind of developed over the years. I think from my skin thinning out as I get older. Gotta love getting older. <laughs> and then I have a little bit of like rosacea lightly around my cheek area and on my nose. And I get little red dots on my nose that I sometimes have to get burnt off or lasered off. I have a couple videos on that if you're interested in seeing the process. You could see under my nose right here, I have one forming again. So I might have to get laser at some point. But for the most part, I would classify my skin as normal. I don't need to have a super hydrating foundation. I don't need to have a super matte foundation. Anything can really work. I just have more of a finicky eye area. I also get Botox. I wanted to mention that. I get Botox in my forehead and that's it. Don't get it under my eyes or anything like that. Uh, that just kind of scares me. Um, I have had lip filler in the past, but I don't have any. That was like two and a half, maybe three years ago, but I don't have anything right now. So I wanted to mention all those things because I think that has a lot to do with like how your skin comes across. If I didn't get Botox, I would definitely have wrinkles here. And I have hereditary, super, super strong 11s. So you can still see a little bit, like I can never truly get them to go away with Botox. I actually get something called Zeman. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like another form of Botox that my skin likes a lot better. So it's not actually Botox, but it basically does the same thing as Botox. I'm not sure if anybody's even familiar with Zeman. So anyway, 
My 11s are extremely strong, so that's mainly where I get most of my Botox. So I wanted to mention all those things in the video. I don't think I've mentioned that before, before we get into the whole winter skincare routine. So again, there are some things that are staples in my skincare routine that I've been using for years and years and years, and that is CeraVe. CeraVe and my skin are best friends. I started with CeraVe a while ago when I was having trouble with my skin. I never had cystic acne or a ton of acne, but I would get spots pop up every once in a while, and I would just kind of go to the drugstore or Ulta, and I would like pick and choose whatever caught my eye. I, I liked the Clinique Moisture Surge for a long time, but once I started on my CeraVe kick, my skin became totally clear and I never really had issues. I do get a couple of spots like around that time of the month, but that's pretty much it. So I always use my CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. I also, in the summer, use the CeraVe salicylic acid version that kind of like foams up this doesn't foam up I've talked about this in all of my skincare videos it kind of feels it's weird like a conditioner for the face but it doesn't leave like a conditioner residue but it's because it's so hydrating and this is all I've been using in the winter because of the like little bit of dryness around my eyes and nose I've been exper experiencing so this is my absolute go-to CeraVe I would recommend for pretty much any anybody now obviously don't take my advice, take your dermatologist's advice and everything, like I said, take it with a grain of salt because what works for me might not work for you. But this is dermatologist recommended. If you go into pretty much any dermatologist or if you go to like an esthetician, they pretty much have CeraVe because it works for such a wide variety of skin. And I just love this. It takes every lick of my makeup off for the most part. And I just can't say enough good things about it. It has hyaluronic acid in it. You're gonna see a lot of hyaluronic acid in my winter skincare routine. Hyaluronic acid works so well with my skin. Now I don't wanna to talk too much about this because I've talked about it so much, but this is my forever and always facial cleanser. I honestly don't think I'm going to switch to anything else because this works so well with me. So the next thing I incorporated into my skin are toners slash micellar waters. So I talked about this one in my last video, the CeraVe Hydrating Micellar Water. I really like to use this after I take my makeup off. I think it just provides an extra level of cleansing and you don't have to rinse it off. Whatever you do, do not put this by the eyes. It says on the back you can put it by the eye like hold a pad over the eye for a few seconds and wipe. Do not do that, you will cry, it burns so bad. So I basically use this after I cleanse at night to get my makeup off. Like I said, I just think it kind of adds another layer of cleansing and hydration because I'm pretty sure that, yep, it has, again, ceramides. All of CeraVe's products have ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide for the most part, which are all like found naturally in the skin for the most part and very, very, very good for the skin. So do some research on that if you're interested in that. So I'm still using the CeraVe micellar water mostly at night when I'm cleansing my face and taking makeup off. Now in the morning, if I'm going in with a toner. I don't do this every time. I probably do this like three, four times a week. I use the Alginist Hydrating Essence Toner. Looks like this. I just recently purchased a bunch of Alginist products because they were on Holt Look. If you don't know what Holt Look is, it's Nordstrom's flash sale site. And they have Alginist on there every so often. And there's a couple products in here that I really wanted to add into my routine. And I thought, why not add a toner that's hydrating for the moaner? for the morning for the morning since I do use the micellar water at night I didn't like using this in the morning because I didn't think it was necessary but I did want an alternative for the morning so I got the alginist now I haven't seen like a crazy difference with this in my skin it might be helping with a little bit of texture and a little bit of redness but if I can add an extra layer of hydration I will so like I said maybe a couple times a week I'll add this since it's like an essence you can really just kind of drop it into your hands as well and just kind of press it into the skin essence is supposed to kind of allow your skin I think if I'm remembering correctly to absorb the rest of the products better so I figured why not if I can add it in let's do it so the next thing I added into my routine that is different are serums so I have a couple of serums one is alginist once again I got that everything I mentioned that's alginist I got it on Holt look for a discounted price and then I added a CeraVe hyaluronic acid so the alginist concentrated reconstructing serum that's this one right here when I read about it it's very similar to the oil that I have from them 
It basically helps with texture, so it smooths the skin, and it helps with kind of discoloration. And I can actually say that this has made a big difference. I think the redness in my skin has severely gone down, and my skin is so soft. I've always had kind of soft skin, but this has taken it to another level that I am just super, super happy with. So this and the oil are gonna be products that I'm going to keep in my routine, like forever. I did want to mention too, I'm not somebody who really looks into my ingredients too much. Maybe one day I'll get to that point. So if any of these products have ingredient, make sure basically what I'm saying is that you look into the ingredients. If you're concerned about it, that's just not my focus. I'm more focused on like what it's doing for my skin and if I see a difference, but make sure you read the ingredients list. The reason I'm saying this is because Tati recently posted like a clean video and there's a lot of ingredients in different products that don't work for people's skin and people want to avoid so just make sure to look into that but this has made a huge difference so after i tone i go in with my serum and this has just taken the texture away i sometimes would get like melia on my skin and i like don't have any melia since using that and i think the oil has something to do with that as well so i love it now i did want an alternative to that because these this and all of the Elginus products are expensive and I'm not always gonna be able to get it on Holt Look for a discounted price. So I wanted a drugstore alternative and I saw CeraVe came out with a hyaluronic acid serum. Now, like I said, my skin reacts so well to hyaluronic acid. So I started adding this into my routine and I think that this adds another layer of hydration that my skin was lacking. I love how this makes my skin feel after I put it on. The Alginist, I don't really feel a difference when I put it on, but with the CeraVe, like it feels so soft. So this is what the texture of the CeraVe looks like. It's interesting. It's kind of like, um, it reminds me of like a silicone. It's not, but it absorbs into the skin so quickly and just it's so soft. I can't I can't say enough good things about this. Now, I did go on Ulta when I bought it to look at the reviews and some people were not happy with this because it ha does have a bit of alcohol in that. So be warned, it does have a bit of alcohol. I think that might help with how it absorbs so fast into the skin, but even with that, knowing that I'm putting like a bit of alcohol on my on my skin, honestly, I don't mind. There's a lot of makeup products I use that have alcohol in it. I think that this has added a lot of hydration into my skin and I'm really enjoying it. A lot of people did say uh, that it balled up on their skin as well when they went in with their moisturizer. So if it doesn't work for you, that's all right. It works so well for me. I haven't experienced any issues with it. I haven't experienced any balling and I just... I love it. I have been really enjoying it. And this is, again, under $20. And it's a nice drugstore alternative to the Alginist. I've already been talking for 14 minutes. I've got to get things going. So the next thing I've kind of changed for the winter is my eye cream. Now, I have not noticed any eye cream make a huge difference for me. I've talked about this in a lot of my videos. I have very, very fine lines under my eyes. And I don't think they're ever going to go away unless I get filler, which I'm not about getting filler under my eyes. So I used to use the Glytone Age Defying Antioxidant Eye Cream. And I'll still go in with this once in a while. But I did just purchase back in like October-ish the CeraVe Eye Repair Cream which looks like this. And this has like the same kind of consistency as the hyaluronic acid does. It's kind of that. So it's, it's less creamy. I, like the only word I have to describe it is it's almost like, it feels like what silicone feels like, but there, I don't think there's silicone in it. But I have been really enjoying this because it's not irritating my eyes at all. I have some of the most allergy prone, watery eyes in the world and this, does not affect that at all. So the claims of this are they like help with puffy eyes and dark circles. I don't have dark circles. I have like a little discoloration right there. I do get puffy eyes cause I have a really busy nine to five and I don't sleep a lot, but I just, I don't see any difference with any eye cream, but I do want to make sure that area is hydrated because that is one of the first areas that start to kind of get wrinkly and saggy and I don't want that to happen. So I've really been enjoying this for my sensitive eyes. 
All right, and then moisturizer. So I still love my CeraVe moisturizing cream. This is one of my all-time favorite moisturizers. It is so good. Again, ceramides, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid. It doesn't irritate my skin at all. Sometimes I won't even go in with the eye cream. I'll just take my moisturizer up here with this because it is so moisturizing and rubs in so fast. Again, I've talked about this in all of my skincare videos if you wanna know a little more detail about that. My like first skincare video, I go really into detail on CeraVe. So love this stuff, we'll always keep this. And I found it in this like travel size, which is a lot easier to pump out rather than digging into the big tube. So I've been enjoying this. I think I got this at Target. So love this. But I have recently added the L to MD Skincare Barrier Renewal Complex, which looks like this. And I've been really enjoying this. I think this is adding another level of hydration into my skin. I did want to mention too, I think that every once in a while, it's good to change things up in your skincare routine, especially when it's like seasons changing, because I think your skin can kind of get used to a routine. So adding something in to kind of change things up for me does a little something. I feel like my skin looks a little more hydrated and dewy than it did before. And this Elta MD has been really, really nice. So it has ceramides, again, it has enzyme therapy. I think there's some B vitamins in here if I remember correctly yeah no actually I don't see any B vitamins that must be something else I'm thinking about but I do feel like my skin is a bit softer with this product as well but I do switch off between both of these sometimes I'll go in with this sometimes go in this with this it doesn't really make a difference but I love both of these products so much the LTMD is obviously more expensive CeraVe is under $20 like that big tub I think this is under $5 and the LTMD I think is somewhere between the 30 and $40 range. So depending on price point and where you're at, you know, choose whatever is best. But I think I'm gonna keep both of these in my routine at least for the winter months for sure. Now to that, I have been adding an oil and this has made all the difference. So I picked up the Elginist uh, Anti-Aging Repairing Oil. It looks like this and I just put two to three drops in my moisturizer and then I go in on my whole face and my neck. By the way, I bring all my makeup products down my neck because again, the neck is one of those areas that can really show signs of aging fast. And this has also helped so much with my texture and the softness of my skin and the overall hydration. I love this. I will always have an oil in my skincare routine now. I'll probably even carry that into the summer because I'm enjoying it so much. Like I said, the claims of of the serum and the repairing oil are very very similar but I want to keep both of them in my skincare routine because I feel like my skin looks so good right now all right so we're gonna fly into the next few products that are all just kind of extras that I use so I talked about this before the skin medica retinol 0.5 love this stuff I use retinol two to three times a week if I'm really dry I won't use it if my skin's really irritated because retinol can kind of irritate your skin a little bit more and I do notice when I do use this if I haven't used it for a while it will bring up a pimple or two because it's kind of like promoting cell turnover, but retinol is such a good thing to add in your skincare routine. I've added this in the last few years and I've noticed a huge difference. Do research on retinol before you use it though. You really wanna start low, like one time a week, talk to a dermatologist or an esthetician before starting, but I've been loving the Skin Medica. I like the texture of it. It is kind of like a lotion-y texture like that. It's strange that it's yellow. I don't love that color, I wish it was white, but that's okay. But yeah, this has made a huge difference in my skincare routine. I'm just gonna rub it into the back of my hand and maybe have the back of my hand peel or something like that. But yeah, I have been loving that. And then every single day, I don't care if it's raining, I don't care if it's snowing, I don't care if it's an apocalypse and there's no sun, I am going in with the SkinCeuticals sunscreen. This is SPF 50. SPF is so important, especially if you're using a retinol, you absolutely need it. I try to avoid the sun at all costs. I have super sensitive eyes. I get really bad headaches if I'm in the sun too much. I've been like that since I was a little girl. So I try to avoid it at all costs, but I always, always go in with an SPF. It's very, very necessary. So make sure you get an SPF. I use the CeraVe one for a long time and I really like that as well if you're looking for an, all, an affordable alternative because SkinCeuticals is 
up there in price. So as far as removing makeup, I have a couple things. I still use my microfiber towel that I got from like DSW. You can get those anywhere. I still use my Pond's cold cream. This is an oldie but a goodie. I've been using this like all my life. I saw that they were just like kind of working with influencers for like a cleansing balm, which I do want to try, but their good old cold cream cleanser is the only thing I can really use around my eyes and not want to cry my eyes out. This does not affect my eyes at all. It does not make me cry and it's super hydrating because it's a cream. I'm sure your grandma and your mom had this, but I will always have this in my skincare routine because it is so good. And then the other product I've recently added to remove my makeup is the Trader Joe's Facial Cleansing Oil. I saw this like a month ago at Trader Joe's. Focus, please. There you go. And it's basically just a combination of different oils and I've been using this around my face to remove like all of the makeup, not my eye area because this will make my eyes cry. But this has been so good for the winter and it's so hydrating. I was going to buy that, I think it's called the DHC oil. I was like about to buy it and then I saw this at Trader Joe's and I've really been liking it. So it has argan oil and coconut oils. I know people are kind of like up in the air about coconut oil on their face and such. So if that doesn't work for you, don't get that. But I've been really liking it and it's $5.99. And look how much I've used of it. And I've been using this like every single time I take my makeup off for the past month or so. So I've been really, really, really liking that as well. And I think adding an oil again in the winter just kind of stops you from stripping your skin too much. All right, and then a couple of the other things, I haven't really been using my clay masks in winter because again, I'm trying to avoid any kind of like dryness to my skin. I've been really wanting to hydrate. So I've been loving this Neutrogena Hydro, Hydro Boost 100% Hydrogel Mask. Looks like this, it's like, $2.99 from Walgreens and it's kind of like a gel mask. Usually I'm not a sheet mask kind of type of person, but this one is so different. It's like a gel and it forms to your skin and it's basically hyaluronic acid for the most part and I just really like this. If I'm doing a video where we're like up close with my face, now I didn't do it today and we're up close because I wanted you to see my skin for what it is. I go in with this and I feel like my skin is plumped and it's super hydrated. Now this comes in a ton of different types, so if you weren't a hyaluronic acid person, you can go and grab the other ones. I've only used the hyaluronic acid, but I've been, this has like pretty much been the only mask I've been using for the winter time. And I think when you have like a special event or you just want your skin to be elevated to that next level, going in with this will make a huge difference. So for $2.99, you can't go wrong. And oftentimes they have like a deal at Ulta or Walgreens or CVS or Walmart, you can get these pretty much anywhere. So I've been loving that and I wanted to mention it. Now the other two things that I try to use at least two to three times a week, like when I'm sitting watching TV, I have this little like vibrating wand. It's from Terry Mare. Again, I got this on Holt Look, I think for like 30 bucks. So it basically just vibrates and it looks like this. Focus. Yeah, there we go. So when I'm sitting in the morning after I do my skincare, I'll just kind of push my skin up and give it a little bit of a boost. And I don't know if this is making a huge difference, but it feels dang good. And I have to believe that it's at least getting the blood flowing in my skin, which is really nice. So I've been enjoying this. If you can find this on Hope Look or for like an affordable price, cause these can get kind of expensive. You might want to add it into your skincare routine. I think throwing this in like the freezer with the battery out might be a really nice thing as well for like five minutes. You can have a nice cooling effect on your skin. And then the other thing I still have that I use is the e.l.f. little vibrating wand. So after I put on my eye cream, I try to do this, like I said, two to three times a week if possible. I'll just go in and it kind of heats up which feels really nice and this does I, I see like an immediate difference when I go in with this after I put on my eye cream it just kind of gets the blood flowing there and holy cow it feels so good it doesn't get super hot it's just nice and warm and I think that it makes my under eyes look a lot better for at least a short period of time. So I still do go in with this as well. So these are products that are just kind of excessive that I use that I really like and it's kind of like a little spa effect at home. And I promise we're almost done here. The last two things I put on my 
well, when I don't put on my face. The, the first one is biotin. I keep this in my bathroom and when I do my skincare at night, I just pop one to make sure my skin and nails and hair are nice and healthy. Look into biotin if you're, you know, having issues with hair growth or your skin or your nails. Might not be for you, but something I wanted to throw out there because I use it. And then finally, I've talked about this before, my little e.l.f. lip scrub. It kind of looks like a lipstick and this is my favorite lip scrub in the world because it comes in a lipstick form and it's like a dollar. So I try to do this at least once a week. I used to just use my toothbrush, but going in with this, really provides that extra level of getting in there and getting the dead skin off your lips and then of course I can't not have my Aquaphor healing ointment this is the only lip stuff I pretty lip stuff lip moisturizer I use for the most part sometimes I throw in like a CO Bigelow one but this is my tried and true and I go in with it every morning and every night and in the day whenever my lips need a little hydration so did I even mention in this video I have no makeup on I'm sure you could tell I have no makeup on but I have zero makeup on I just have a little brow gel keeping my brows up because my brows will look like this if I don't set them up so yeah and that is it for my skincare you guys I know I've been talking a lot but skin is just so important to me and I've been really really focusing on it lately and I feel like I can see a huge difference when I watch my videos back in the texture and the hydration in my skin so I wanted to share my winter skincare routine now I of course like drink a ton of water water is pretty much the only drink I drink except for coffee and like an occasional diet coke I eat pretty healthy for the most part I eat mostly vegetarian I eat a little chicken a little turkey every so often um, and I don't really eat fried food too often maybe every so often when I'm out with a friend and that has a huge difference on skin as well so keep all that in mind but yeah I hope this video was helpful to some of you if you guys have any questions on any of of this skincare please let me know below I try to respond to each and every comment and I love hanging out with you guys in the comment section below otherwise if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me please subscribe it means the absolute world to me and I hope to see you guys in the next one thanks so much for watching bye bye